Today's case is still unsolved and will drive you insane. Wondering about what went down. It's got all the trappings of a perfect crime story. A beautiful woman perishing a foreign land. And a national cover-up that makes me nervous to even tell you this story right now. Well, let's get into it. Here is the story of Raja Atif, the model with the blue eyes. girl with the blue eyes was a stunning model known all over the world. But to her family, she was Rauda Atif, a caring young woman much more committed to a career in medicine than photo shoots. She was at university in Bangladesh with plans to join her family in Australia to finish her studies. Then, seven months ago, she was found dead in her college dorm room. Our story begins in the Maldives a small island nation in the Indian Ocean. Radha was born on May 18, 1996, to her parents Muhammad Atif and Aminat Muharimat. As she grew up, her natural features and good looks began to get attention from everyone around her. In addition to having a warm smile and a strong jawline, she had shimmering blue eyes that set her apart and made the world stop to look at her. When she was 17, a photo of her went viral that was appropriately called Maldivian girl with the blue eyes. It's truly an image that will make you stop scrolling to absorb her hypnotic beauty. After this image began to garner attention, she started receiving requests from modeling agencies and from there her life was never the same. But her passions didn't end at modeling. While she enjoyed this work, she wanted to be known for more than just her looks. She had a passion for helping people and excelled at science. So she put two and two together and decided she would strive to become a doctor. After high school, she received a scholarship to study medicine at Islami Bank Medical College in Bangladesh, where she would spend her first two years of school. At the time of her mother, she had actually planned to transfer to a college in Australia to finish up her degree and be closer to her family, who had also moved over there. During this period, she was so focused on her studies and becoming an excellent student that she had turned away from the modeling world. That is, until she was presented with an opportunity she just couldn't refuse. In October of 2016, she appeared on the cover of Vogue India, which is huge. She appeared with six other girls from the Indian subcontinent for the magazine's 9th anniversary special edition. In an eventual tribute to Rauda put out by the magazine, the beauty editor described how tracking her down was not easy and it required her to resort to reaching out through Facebook. She quickly learned that modeling was second place in Rada's life and that she would not do the photo shoot if it interfered with her studies, which it didn't. After the magazine was released, she once again got a lot of attention and her Instagram started blowing up. Radha was ecstatic when she saw how the shoot turned out. She was proud of the work she and the other models did and what they stood for. But not everyone was as thrilled. Her med school was a very conservative institution and existed within the largely Muslim state of Bangladesh. And while Radha and her family were Muslim, they were way more moderate in their beliefs and religion. Before deciding to go to school, her parents warned her about the new country she was going into and she did not seem to be bothered by it and wouldn't let these accelerated customs affect her. So she started wearing hijabs when she was in public and began dressing more conservatively as to not raise any concern. But Rada was a very gorgeous girl, so it was hard to not notice her. And when the magazine cover dropped, people around her started to look at her differently. The more traditional Muslim communities do not condone women dressing as revealing as she had done on the cover. 
and even the whole practice of modeling and representing your body that way was extremely looked down upon. And now I'm not sure about the religion, but I'm just saying what I have read from the news. Um, it does not mean that I'm against this religion, so please do not come for me in the comments. I mean, every religion has their rules and regulations, and I really respect it as well. From all I've read on the news, Islam is a very peaceful religion, and I know uh, all around the world, everybody thinks that Muslims are terrorists and extremists, but I believe what they're doing is following their religion, and I don't think anybody should have problems in that. But anyway, back to the story. So even though Raja was celebrating her culture, and her body as she saw fit, it was still deemed to be in contrast to their religion and she soon became a bit of the pariah. Which brings us to March 29th, 2017. In the early afternoon, a friend came to Radha's dorm room to check in on her. And when she arrived, the double doors were locked together. She tried knocking, but there was no answer. And for some inexplicable reason, there was a decent slit between where the two door panels met. And it was big enough that when the friend peered through to see if anyone was in the room, what she saw made her scream so loud, it filled the entire dorm floor. The friend would later say that she gathered some of the other girls who lived on the floor and together they broke down Radha's door. And inside the dorm room, they found Radha hanging from the ceiling fan with a silk scarf tied around her neck. So they immediately phoned the authorities. And when the police arrived, they found Radha's body cut down from the fan and laying on the bed face up. There were also a decent amount of concern floor mates hanging around her room. So effectively, any chance of analyzing this crime scene in a cohesive manner had been dashed. She was quickly sent to the hospital attached to the medical college where a quick 30-minute autopsy was conducted without her parents' permission or knowledge. Authorities ruled it as a suicide and attributed that to the deep marks around her neck. But not everyone was so convinced of this narrative. Her father, Muhammad, was immediately suspicious when he heard that she had committed suicide. He didn't think that there was anything in Radha's life that would cause her to act that way. And more often than not, I would say that most parents don't always know what's going on in their children's lives, especially if they're in college. But from what we know about Radha's life during this period, her father might be right. She was stunning, smart, well-liked. She was on the track to becoming a successful doctor. It just didn't add up that this young woman in her prime would take her life this way. But to be clear, this wasn't the only thing that seemed off about her death. It was only the tip of the iceberg. So let's talk about the crime scene. As we mentioned earlier, she was found hanging from a ceiling fan. And to describe the fan as fancy would be a generous assessment. This is the room where Rauda was found and seven months on, it's still a crime scene. Now her body was supposedly hanging from a ceiling fan, which is identical to this one. Now I'm no expert, but Rauda weighed 55 kilos. I'm gently pulling on that and look what's happening. If 55 kilos was hanging from that, then surely the fan would come down. Now, to make things even more suspicious, the scarf used to tie her to the fan was just a silk scarf, like the one you would wear when it's too hot out. And yet the marks on her neck were deep and abrasive. When her father questioned the performance of the autopsy, who definitively declared her death as suicide, they said that the dark marks on her neck were simply birthmarks, which is suspicious because no, it wasn't birthmarks. She didn't have those marks on her neck. But even weirder was the scene of the crime. There were clear signs that indicated a struggle in the drawing room. A large crack was found in a glass tabletop as well as a shatter in her wall mirror. Even weirder, there was a half-drank cup of tea sitting on the table and a pot of curry cooking on the stove. It was as if she was getting ready to start her day when she was attacked. I mean, come on, why would she be cooking in the moments before her suicide? 
But what perhaps draws the whole story into question, one that was repeated by several of the girls who discovered her body, was that the door they purposely bursted down had no signs of forced entry. And speaking of her friends, let's talk a little bit about the last person to see her alive. Sirat Parvin was Radha's best friend at school. Or was she? There is reason to believe that she was jealous of Radha, whether it be her good looks, success in school or a mixture of both it seemed as if radha had it all and look it's natural to feel jealous of someone who seems to have their entire life together but sirat maybe had other intentions a week before she was found radha complained to her dad about sudden stomach pains and said that she was worried that sirat may have poisoned her juice she stored in the room and on top of that the day after radha's body was found there was some suspicious activity on her instagram because of her model status she had accrued a decent number of followers more than the average instagram user and on the day following her death someone logged into her account and this anonymous person unfollowed two people and two people only and one of them was surat to make things even weirder the instagram account was fully deleted a few days later again by a mysterious person following this radha's father lodged a formal complaint to the magistrate saying that Surat had a hand in her murder and the case should be investigated again. So the local and university police were replaced by the Bangladesh Criminal Investigation Department, also known as CID, which is basically like the FBI or CIA. And the CID ordered that the border be resumed for another autopsy so we could get a better idea of what happened to Radha during her death. And we'll talk a little bit more about the result of the autopsy soon, but first, let's get into one of the big theories about her death. It's a conspiracy that goes all the way to the top. While Sirat was being investigated as a person of interest, Radha's father seemed to think that there could be another element to his daughter's death. And I'm not a huge authority on this, but in the past few years, the domestic extremist groups have risen within Bangladesh. In fact, a week before Radha's passing, the college was raided after suspicions had mounted that the college had ties to local terrorist groups. 29 students and teachers were arrested. Again, not an authority on the intricacies of Bangladesh terrorist groups, but there is reason to believe that Radha's Vogue cover had the attention of some very bad people. People who thought that Radha had been disrespecting their traditions, and for that, she had to be taken care of. The practice of killing someone and making it look like a suicide had been speculated during various cases in Bangladesh. Two models had supposedly committed suicide past year and many, many others had received death threats for how they had chosen to represent themselves and to muddy the waters even further. When the CID released the results of their findings, they didn't have anything substantial to say. They once again reiterated the theory that she had committed suicide, but added that she had done so over a fight with her boyfriend. They cited text messages from him that indicated he wanted to break up with her, and Radha was unwilling to listen. But Radha's father didn't buy it. He still convinced that Radha's friends were in cahoots with students who had ties to terrorist groups who wanted to put an end to Radha and her deep blue eyes. And I'm inclined to agree. But that is the sad, sad story of the unsolved death of Radha Atif. What do you think happened? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.